today I'm going to show you a um, quick tour of the our new Oculus programming app. Uh, we have used we've used that name already in the past. We had a small app called Oculus uh, using the same name, and um, but we we never pushed um, this uh, this app. I mean, it wasn't ready. It was not exactly what we wanted to do. So blah blah blah. But um, today I'm happy to show that new app. This I guess we made a great job with it. This is a fantastic tool. You're, you're going to see why later uh, today um, during the presentation. Um, you, for those who know um, is a Pro 2 already, you'll find some, um, some similar uh, things. Um, it has been, of course, um, yeah, it, it's available for iOS as well. At the moment, the, we will be able like soon to supply the Android version, and we gotta wait a bit longer for for the iOS version, but it should be ready like uh, uh, before the summer. I hope before the summer. I mean, Simon will tell you guys exactly uh, when, uh, but I guess it should be uh, it should be okay for the uh, for the for the summer. You say two weeks, two weeks, is fantastic. So this is like before the summer, even before the summer. So yeah, um, Android and uh, iOS, of course. Today I'm showing the app on a, a Android tablet, but uh, but I guess there there are no there is no difference between the um, between the two apps. So yeah, uh, as I said, you will um, you will find some uh, similar um, things compared to the um, to the as a Pro Two. Um, it's um, like um, like the, the layout, the graphics, and we uh, we've tried to. Um, to uh, to work like uh, to make like things consistent, so let's start with it. Um, first of all, one point, one very important: um, the app is compatible with all our Wi-Fi and Ethernet standalone devices. That that includes um, the Stick D3, Stick KE2, the older version KE1, uh, CW4, of course. Um, the new the new device Dina that will be that I'm going to to show and introduce in two weeks now um, the Sliza U10 and I guess um, it is also compatible um, over USB using like um, an Android tablet this isn't of course possible with the iOS device but but uh, you can connect like any USB uh, USB device uh, any Nicolaudi, of course, device USB interface to the um, to your Android tablet and programming program it over USB. So this is the the main screen. When you start the app, you um, this is the project screen. In fact, so you can see on the upper right corner there is a uh, cloud icon. Um, this is an important uh, feature of the app. The um, remember we we've talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We are um, close to release our um, LS Cloud app service, LS, Cl LS Cloud service. Sorry, this um, so this uh, this service will offer some possibilities for Oculus user to uh, to upload and load their shows. That we, which means you have possibility to uh, imagine you create you create a uh, a show with this uh, with a tablet and you want to use it later with a, with another tablet. This will be possible. You just have to log into your account and and download the file. Um, this is one one feature of this uh, this cloud um, cloud service. There will be also some other uh, stuff like the possibility to manage your uh, standalone Linux controllers over, over the internet, like write new show update the firmware um, and uh, and stuff uh, stuff like that. We there will be a dedicated presentation in a couple of weeks. So. Uh, what do we have here? Um, I have a plus button that I can press to create a new project. So let's start today with a, uh, let's call it like webinar, very basic, and press OK. So this is the uh, first project. So if I turn back to the uh, My Project window, you can see I have the webinar at the existing one, the, the Bruno I had created a couple of minutes ago. So if I press webinar, tap webinar, um, here is the um, the first um, Oculus screen. So if the, to open the menu, you need to press the um, the icon on the upper left corner, 
and this is where you're gonna have to um, to select what tab, what screen of the um, of the of the app you want to to play with. So there is the feature screen, which is the um, the, the screen I was uh, I was on at the moment. The design scene screen, where you're gonna have to create. And you will have the possibility to, to to create your your show. And the play and write, where you can test and of course uh, write the uh, standalone memory of your controller. As you can see now, I'm connected to a, a um, well, from the from device list, there is this Garden Studio 7 b interface connected. If you press the, uh, the exclamation mark here, you can see it's like a Studio 7 b the serial number, and the IP address. This is the, the interface I'm connected to at the moment. Um, it's just on, it is just on my desk now with an Ethernet cable to the local router. So this is the, the interface I'm going to uh, write the memory of at the moment. I know Studio 7 b is not compatible with Zarkolis, Simon, but this is um, <laughs> this is what I had today, and this is the only interface I had on my desk. But anyway, it's not a big deal. Um, I won't be uh, I won't be able to 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 write the memory. Will it be possible at some point anyway, Simon? If you or never, not the seven B. Okay. But anyway, in, if you had a compatible interface, you you will be able to 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 of course write the uh, the memory. But this is not the purpose of today, as I'm going to do like a global tour of the app. This was just like to show you the device uh, list. So let's turn back to the feature tab. Okay, so here we are. Um, so as you can see from the um, at the bottom of the of the screen, you can find like almost the same identical icons that we have in as a Pro Two, which means like the basic uh, single channel color on the on the left side, then the the like the, with its little RGB bulb, like the for for um, let's say an um, RGB RGB white or any uh, any any channel light any lights like that. There is this matrix button on the middle, flexible LED strips. Uh, on the right side, and then the last button is if you wanted to customize and use your um, um, your own profile. Cancel. So uh, let's create a press like the um, the, the RGB RGB icon. So let us now. Uh, I prefer using RGB white. This way, I'll be able to show you the white channel later. So let's add like 10, 10 products and press add. And here are my 10, uh, 10 lights. So you can use the screen to move the, uh, the lights on like um, just tap the screen and hold your finger and it will allow you to, um, to move them on the screen. There are some um, icon, some different tool as well. So if you press this one, for example, on the left, you can create some, uh, Fancy uh, things using your using your finger. So you can see like that, and you can move, rotate. I mean, different different option. There are some also preset position like um, lines, vertical, circle like this. You can use your two fingers to um, to resize the circle as well. So different options. Uh, to um to space to 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 set up your uh, to the screen, there is a uh, grid as well on the um if you press the um, the icon um, at the bottom, and an important button you can see which is this one on the um on the lower left corner, which allows you to see the DMX address and the end index of uh, every um, every um every um uh every features so uh circle like that let's just remove that and there are some also options to um to change like the, the shape just a bit basic like it can be like a circle shape or and use like different size like small small buttons uh, or, or make them like a, a bit uh, larger with this uh with this tool so let's remove this now. Okay. Uh, An important thing is also the patch button, which is where you're gonna have to, of course, patch the uh, 
your lights to the DMX universe. Uh, this is not this is not um, this is automatic, but you can of course modify the um, the um, the address of your of your device. Uh, okay, so we're done with that. You can have, of course, like a, a, mat a matrix if you wanted, like by pressing the matrix, um, tapping the matrix button and select RGB white as well. Select so like, uh, let's do something like a 10 by 10, for example. Press add and here is the matrix. You can like move, move the position or do some, uh, make it smaller, for example. And uh, you can, uh, select some different um, arrangement for the uh, for the feature order as well. So here you are. Uh, so I've got like two kinds of device, the matrix and my circle of um, RGB points. There is a possibility to create zone as well. So this is for um, very useful for uh, multiple zone controllers. Like imagine now I want to create one zone for the matrix. You press zone one here and one for the circle lights. Global, come back to global, select those one and press. Okay, so sorry for that. Select this one and press zone. So I've got like zone one and zone two and the global, of course. Make sure you have a compatible device if you want to use zone as they are like compatible with multiple um, zone controller only. Okay, so uh, now let's try to uh, create our first scene. So remember, press the menu, the button menu on the upper left corner and select design scene. So this is the construction screen where you will be able to to um to build your your scenes though there are some um let's pretty like how the uh, the screen has been arranged there are two views two possibilities to to create your scenes the default one which is this one where you're gonna have to select the device and assign uh, some uh, basic or dynamic effects and if you press the button on the upper right corner you can see this uh, little timeline uh, icon on the upper right if you press that button you turn to the uh, timeline view there is a possibility to uh, either create your scene using the timeline or uh, or the uh, the other view the standard view so i've got here the possibility to select the the zone so global zone one and zone two which are the the, the two zones i have created before the scene so scene one is the standard default, and then you can add some uh, other thing by pressing the the plus button, and just then select the scene you want to to play with. Uh, this uh, the button located on the right side of the uh, of the scene list is uh, like scene scene settings where you can select like a different name, for example, say let's call it Bruno. It's not very original, but uh, this is like this. Uh, you can uh, select both trigger as well from this window. Let's imagine you wanted to uh, have a dry contact to uh, to uh, to start that um, that scene, like let's say port number one, for example. You can specify here. By default, the um, the the scene will be uh, infinite, but you can select and specify different loop number. So here are the uh, different uh, information and calendar trigger, but we will uh, see this uh, later. So save. So this is my uh, Bruno scene. So imagine now we want to um, to add some uh, static colors to uh, to your lights. You can either select the um, first. You need to select the device, of course, and you can first select the um, the basic uh, button. Uh, you can see from the um, from the effects zone. So if you press that button, you got here like the the color. So this is red by default, but you can, by pressing the um, the color, you can adjust the color. And eventually, if you press this little icon on top of the fader, here you can access like um, advanced uh, color settings and eventually play with the white channel, which is available on this uh, on this device. So press grow back. 
save, for example. So I have this um, this color here. There is another way to call that um, that window, the color window, which is uh, to press and hold the button, the um, the feature for a couple of seconds. So if you do that, oh, let's press save first. Sorry, you press and hold, and this open the same window. So you can assign like different color, like you know, press this one, hold, or eventually select all and assign assign a color to all of them. So this is the um, how you, you can create your um, and assign a specific a static color. You could do the same for the for the matrix, of course. And for example, press and hold and assign a different color to uh, to the lights. So I've got now the matrix in blue and the uh, the circle in red. Uh, there is the possibility to imagine you you have a um, a patch with uh, a lot of different um, different products. There is a possibility to create groups. So let's say, for example, if I wanted to divide my uh, my circle in two different groups, you can press like uh, select them, the top one, and press group, and select the lower one press group again. So now you've got like two groups, one and two. This will be like a great, great tool for uh, for, for the programming. And, uh, and of course, um, for an important reason, which is the fixtures order. Uh, remember, like, for example, when you create them um, for a static effect, it has no, it, it won't make any difference. But imagine you, you want to use a, a, ch a chaser, for example, effect and assign them to, to the light, um, the feature order, the way the order you've selected the, the feature is with it is very important. This will um, make the um, make your uh, your effect look look different look different if you select a different uh, different order. So with uh, with this group button, you have the possibility to imagine like for example you want to select from left to right or from right to to the left. There is a possibility to create different groups. So you could um, play the um, playback with your, your effects in different order. Okay, so then uh, there is a playback button on the uh, on the upper side of the uh, of the screen. So you press play, and this is just like now sending the DMX information to the lights. I only have a uh, I have a static if scene, so you won't see any change. But if I was creating a second step I could I couldn't could do that so you can see here from the um, from the uh, timeline window that we've got the uh, my uh, five colors so they are playing on the um, on the same uh, on the same uh, same device so, so of course there is a priority between the timeline and um, so you cannot see like um, the other colors, but if you wanted to change the other, there will be a possibility, which is to press and hold the left part of the effect, and you could put this one on top, for example, and change the uh, the order of the timeline. So remember, so press on the left and move up and down to change the uh, the, the the timeline order. If you press play, it just play the uh, the sequence. You can also modify the size and the position by pressing and holding in the center to modify the position or this small arrow on the side to change the uh, the size of the um, of the effects on the timeline uh, let's go back to the um, there is something I forgot to talk about uh, let's go back to the standard view we have created this um, this uh, super tool on the uh, on the right side of the uh, scene setting button, which is a uh, wizard uh, button. In fact, you have the possibility to um, to use pre-programmed effects. Uh, this is something that is coming from our uh, live uh, software, uh, Sunlight, a function we um, we were using a lot with the uh, with the Sunlight software, and uh, you can create some uh, basic rainbow pastel or one white effect and have the the, the app to create uh, scenes uh, using those effects. You also have the possibility to create your own um, favorites by using the uh, favorites button. Imagine you, you create something fancy and you want to be able to use it again. You can press the favorite um, button and this will create a new um, a new effect 
that you're gonna be able to use like for a different project, for example. Okay, so let's now create a second scene with uh, with more steps. Uh, scene two. So here it is. Um, so let's create, for example, something to play on the uh, on the on the matrix. I will use the rainbow. So this is the standard rainbow effect, and you've got you have the possibility to update uh, the colors, um, add more colors. You can also um, for example, let's say this one. Uh, if you want to remove a color, you just need to press this button on the the bin button on the um, on the uh, on the fader, okay. And you could add another one by pressing this button here, okay, like this. So you can do whatever you you want. Every time you want to exit the um, like the fader, you just need to press somewhere else. Like if you are used to use um, different um, uh, mobile app like this, they, they, all, they all work the same. On the lower left corner, there are like um, a couple of options. Uh, the one in the middle with the faders offers the possibility to um, to change, for example, the direction of the effect, uh, update the phasing. So by def so you can like play and uh, do something uh, something different with uh, with this fader and the fade. So it just works with um, with the fader. And the last the last button, uh, which is the where you can update the F, the effect speed or simply adjust the duration of the uh, of the effect. Let's see if you want this effect to be twenty second, you just need to okay adjust twenty second. And when if you're ready with that, tw press save and you're done. And now if you play. You can see your um, your rainbow effect playing. So uh, on the matrix, let's do something now with the um, with the uh, with the other uh, other feature. So you can either select like this. So remember, we have those uh, group button as well. Okay, so I could have created one with the with all the the features. So let's select with the finger finger by dragging. Um, uh, a rectangle and let's say for example we want to use the chaser so I just press the chaser button uh, and now you can I don't have I don't like these colors let's put like a, for example like this and the second one um, tac, 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 yeah, let's create something uh, okay okay in blue go like this okay so you can do whatever you want. Just press the, um, the, the the color buttons, and of course you can add more colors if you want it, and do something um, something different. Again, if you want to remove the color, press this the bin on the upper side. It's, uh, okay. Then second option, you can change the size of your cheese. Other option here, the feeder. You can have some create some bounce uh, effect. Add some bounce effect to the um, to the uh, to the effect and uh, allow the um, the uh, chaser to go outside of the or not. Press save, and there you are. So you now have something like the rainbow. Uh, it it doesn't look very good. I'm sorry. It's too fast. Anyway, uh, you can see what I wanted to show. <laughs> so you can do that, and if you go to the timeline, you can see I've got like uh, my effects here. Okay, so I have this chaser. You can assign the same same length, for example, like this. Whatever, do whatever you want. You can change like um, and you can have like the chaser place play it first and then the the rainbow I mean you can use the timeline to uh, to to do um, to do whatever you want okay so I guess I'm most done with uh, the programming tour you have like this uh, little window on the um, on the, this preview window on the um, 
on this screen, which allows you to to see like the programming. So if you come back here, you can see like it will turn to the to the matrix. There you go. Okay, so um, let's go back to this one. I, I guess I've seen everything. There are just like a different uh, different effects. I mean, you can uh, you can use for the um, for the for the programming. Um, so let's press the uh, option, the menu button, and go to play and write. So here uh, are my two, my three zone. At the global is always there, and uh, zone one and zone two, which are the two zones I've created before for the for the matrix and the, uh, the circle. So you can play your sequences here and 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 try them. To tr and of course, um, use um, this screen to write uh, the standalone memory of the device, which I won't be able to do with the uh, Slaza U7 as this U7B is not compatible. But this is where you would have to, to do it. There is an important view on that, um, on that uh, screen. Um, but if I want to talk about that, I need to create some uh, time triggers first, so I need to go back to the design scene. Imagine you want to start a sequence at any time, like let's say like uh, every day, uh, every morning at 8 o'clock, so you have to select like, for example, scene, the scene 2, and from the settings window, you can select a calendar trigger, so press the, so press the uh, arrow on the calendar triggering, and press plus to create a new trigger. So like, say like every day, 8 a.m., okay. So this is every day, okay. Now I'm done with that. And you can, you could add another one, like imagine you want to create that, to start that sequence, sequence again at, uh, at 6 p.m. every day. So there, there's now there are now like two uh, triggers for for that uh, for that sequences. Okay, and you press save. And now there is the possibility to see that if you go back to the uh, play and write, uh, you will have the possibility to to check this by pressing the upper right button. I don't know if you see this button on the upper right corner of the screen. And if you press that button, there is this uh, timeline view where you're going to have the possibility to test um, your calendar triggers. So imagine today we are like uh, June the 9th. So if you press, if you change the time, and I should be able at 8 o'clock to start by sequence. This is what I've done here. You can see this little uh, black um, black dot on the on the timeline, which shows that there is something. And if you okay, and I should be able to uh, call that scene again at six p.m. So this is an important tool. Sometimes, like uh, people are complaining, it's difficult to uh, to test the um, the calendar events. I mean, you have to change the time of the of the device. Um, go with your hardware manager, like uh, change like uh, today, uh, whatever, the, whatever, whatever the time is, you have to update the time and then press save and load the standalone memory again and check the show. With that tool, you've got the possibility to um, imagine you to test everything. Imagine there is a specific scene to be started on August uh, like 15. You would at eight o'clock, you would have the possibility to uh, to to check if everything is programmed correctly using this. Um, using this uh, timeline view. I drink a bit. OK, uh, I um, guess I am done with almost um, everything. Uh, tuck, 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 tuck. If there anything I forgot to talk about, uh, I made a quick. OK. Uh, design scene, blah blah blah. Uh, fixtures. No, I guess I'm I'm okay with. Uh, uh, yeah, Simon just wrote uh, something on the um, uh, text. Like, if you want to try the app before it becomes official, 
the, we've got the possibility to uh, to send you a um, test flight um, test uh, mode for the for iOS or um, or the um, or like the APK for uh, for Android. And the compatible devices, yeah, are listed uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the text zone as well. Uh, we will have uh, the Arcolips web page is ready, so we just need to now have the official presentation done with the uh, with the Dina, the new products like the the, the LS Cloud, the cloud service, and the Arcolips. And when it's going to be done, we will release the web page where you will have the possibility to. Um, to check like uh, more details and and um, and share them with your with your with your customers. So I don't know what you think about this app. Um, uh, no, it won't be uh, Fabio. In, I mean the the Sleza UE seven is. Um, uh, I don't know if it's the only reason, but we have there are like too many copies of uh, of that interface in the in the market. I mean too many Chinese Chinese copy. So we have to make we had to make a decision, and the decision was to uh, to um, to to not have that interface compatible with uh, with the uh, with the future developments. I know this is um, this isn't good. I mean, I understand it can be frustrating, but um, we had to make that decision. I mean, there are like uh, there are some some people making more money with than us now at the moment selling that uh, copy of these interfaces so it's it's a bit it was a bit complicated to uh, to make the the app compatible i know this is more for the entertainment than for architectural but still we had to uh, to uh, to close the um, the compatibility uh, anyway we will have some good replacement uh, interface for the 7B uh, in a couple of weeks now. So this is, um, well, not ready for um, for purchase, but uh, I'll be able to, um, to um, at least uh, show the uh, more details in more details soon. Uh, okay, so any question? I hope you like the app. This is to me, like this is a fantastic tool. I mean, this solves a lot of problem you can have like when you want to program on site and like uh, if you want, you can walk around the around the building and try your uh, program your your device and this is also good to uh, for to try in fact so you, just like uh, when pre devices have been um, have been uh, addressed and installed on site you can you can just like uh, move around the building with the of course you need a you need a wi-fi connection but the um, you can just move around the building and and test your uh, your lights with the uh, with any uh, any tablet uh, yep, compatible with phone and, and tablets. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Okay, so as usual, the I will uh, later uh, upload the uh, video, the recorded video to the um, to our YouTube channel, so we have the possibility to watch it again. Uh, either a PC equivalent. I mean, the PC the PC equivalent is basically Zephyr Pro Two. Um, I know I know there are like um, some uh, some differences, but at the moment I don't think there is any plan to uh, to develop a, a, a PC version of the of the app. Uh, I guess uh, as a Pro Two is able to do like uh, most of the same things. Uh, it can be like a little bit more complicated but this is not this much so so i guess we i don't know if simon can answer to this question but the at the moment there is no this is an app I mean, which means like a table tab, tablet and, and smartphone so android and uh, ios oh yeah true i mean i'm not an ipad user but i know that there is a possibility to uh, to uh, to uh, to use the app on the on the mac but yeah it's designed for for tablet. I mean, for to use it with your with your finger and not not uh, not with the mouse. Any other question? Or are we done for today? Tuck, tuck, tuck. No question. No question. You're welcome. 
Okay, so if we are done, um, I will just say bye to everyone. Thank you, Simon, for uh, for having answered those uh, questions and for the details. And um, now stay, um, make sure you follow us on on social media or check our website as uh, we are planning the um, uh, we are planning the uh, live presentation of the 2020 range of controller that will include like Arcolis and um, and um, and Ezapro 2 um, the the cloud service as well. But the most important thing we will talk about is the, the hardware, um, the new hardware range of uh, controller. Uh, we have the stock now, so we will be able to at least deliver sample um, very by um, I would say like before the um, before the end of the month. So let's first do the presentation online, and um, the first sample will be uh, available like uh, like a couple of days after. Have a good one. Thank you for watching and uh, see you for the uh, next session. Won't be next week, I guess in two weeks. Uh, and uh, it will be like uh, for the live presentation of the, uh, the new product. Thank you and uh, take care.